Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Danich Kimiak II, and I'm the Digital Painter. I want to welcome you uh, along on another trip as we delve into some digital painting. And this week, we're actually going to be answering a question that came up on YouTube recently. Before I go there, if you're brand new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, uh, you can check out the website, www.thedigitalpainter.com. That's where all of the old videos and blog posts and things like that are. Check them out. Uh, it's a yeah, it's a nice little site. I visit it often. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple weeks ago, um, actually recently the comment came up, but I posted a video, uh, actually it was probably several months ago now, that dealt with Paintstorm Studio, which is a fabulous uh, uh, digital painting program that isn't terribly expensive. And the question came in, did you figure out how the clipping masks work? And at the time when I originally did the video on Paintstorm Studio, I hadn't had a lot of experience with clipping masks, and now I have due to actually Illustrator. So we're going to go back into that. So let's jump over into Paintstorm Studio. Here we are. Uh, let me get set up here. Uh, now, for those that don't know, I'm working on a Wacom Cintiq 22 HD, uh, and um, yeah, so I've got it open. Right now, I just opened up a new file and we're going to look at it. Now if you're brand new to Paintstorm Studio, may I suggest that you jump back and check out some of the other Paintstorm Studio videos, but if you're not new to Paintstorm Studio and you own the program, then you kind of just need to really follow along. Now Paintstorm Studio, I did a video last week on an update on it. Well believe it or not, in the past week there was another update, nothing major, but I did want to point it out. Uh, one of the things that they did change is now when you add layers, you can actually click on a layer and drag it to its new position. You used to not be able to do that, so that's actually really nice. It's more like Photoshop, right? Okay, so let's look here. We've got two layers. On the first layer, we're just going to do... Let me get a little... Where's my pencil texture? We'll do a quick sketch. What do we, what do we want to sketch? What do we want to sketch today? Um... <laughs> this is this is where you see me improvise because I don't always uh, necessarily have a plan. Um, let's just sketch a. Oh, we should probably get a color that's going to read. There we go. Just doing a quick vase here. Now, one of the things uh, I um, I don't know all the shortcut keys for Paintstorm Studio because I I haven't been playing with it as much as I have in Photoshop. So you'll have to forgive me if there are a couple times I kind of go searching. Oops. There we go. <laughs> My wife told me I should have done. I should do a uh, an Easter egg, which isn't a bad idea. But I um I wasn't really feeling the Easter eggs. You know, I like Easter eggs. I like Easter, but. I wanted to do something, I don't know, something like this. Boy. All right, so we have our vase. Now let's go in and color it. Now I'm going to do the coloring on a different layer. So my layer is added and as always I'm going to put my layer underneath my pencil sketch. And let's see, let's make our vase kind of 
we'll lay in this. We're going to use the classic transparency, I think. Or we could come over here. Let's see what this looks like. That's fine, we'll do this. I really do, you know, I don't play with the program enough, um, but I do really enjoy Paintstorm Studio. For the price, it really can't be beat. So if you're looking for, if you're looking for a um, an affordable program, this uh, this is this is one of those. Okay, I'm just laying in some of my initial colors. We, uh, we've got some thunderstorms rolling through tonight. It's nice to be in spring. All right, so we've gone ahead. We've just got a base coloring of everything, nothing fancy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this layer up here. And I'm gonna move it down one. And I'm gonna turn on the clipping layer. Okay, see how I've done that? Now what the clipping layer essentially does is anything that I draw on this layer, it clips to what is already down. So for example, I'm gonna do a quick pull of this color here, the purple, and take it darker because I wanna do some shading, right? And you'll see here, I start to put in the shading, but it will not go out. It'll only go as far out as the initial purple went. See, I can't come down here. Now, I can, if I wanted to, color into the yellow, because that's there. I'm actually gonna erase some of this that extended, because that extended, there we go. So essentially what it's doing is it's clipping my paint directly to the layer that it's quote unquote clipped to, okay? Now, does that mean it's not like if I put down over here? Well, I'll show you, if I turn off the clipping layer, you'll see all of my excess marks are visible. Turn back on the clipping layer and they're all gone. So that's essentially what the clipping layer is doing. It is clipping your paint that you're putting down on a layer to the layer below it. Now you can do this with multiple layers. So let's say, let me add another layer and move it down one. Now you have to be careful. So you notice there, now that purple is clipping to this empty layer here. So I'm gonna put that back up. I'm gonna turn this as a clipped layer on. And now this color will only clip where both of the previous are. So for example, there's it'll clip there or over here. So it'll clip on top of both of the layers that are below it, okay? So I'm just gonna darken a little bit here. Now, why would you use this? Well, there could be a couple of instances. Uh, when I'm doing a clipping layer, I'm usually, like I said, working in, working in Illustrator. And so oftentimes I'm clipping shapes. So here, the, it, 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 it's not something that I necessarily would use often, but rather than always having to erase outside, which is something that I often do when I'm, you know, when I'm doing shading, shadows, highlights, 
I, I am often erasing the excess. What you'll see me do, let me put it on new layers. I'll come in like this, for example. And I, you know, I'm just doing a, a highlight layer here. But notice I'm, go I'm going out on purpose right now. But there's the highlight layer. And then I'll come back and I'll erase like this. Well, if you do a clipping layer, you don't have to worry about that. So it's even more important, like if you're using a spray brush, which I have to remember where my spray painty brushes are in here. I know I've used them before. So it's, they're in here somewhere. See, this is the problem when you don't use a program often enough is you start to forget where things are and when you forget where things are it makes it more difficult well pa oh here we go oh these are all blenders you <laughs> definitely don't want those okay well i can't find my spray sprays in here i know they're somewhere and rather than waste your time i'm you know oh found it so here we go, a simple darker, and we'll come in here. Actually, let's do a soft multiply, and because I'm clipped, I can overlap and not worry about it. See that? I'm going to undo all that because that's all not what I wanted because it's a multiply. We'll just go... Just a color, here we go. But you see, I can't go out of the, where it clips it directly to that layer. Now I can come up here, and you notice I could do the whole thing in this purple. Very boring picture, but you get the idea. So that is what, Again, this is the clipping mask over here, and I'm going to go ahead and unclip all these layers so you can see everything. That's what the clipping mask's for. Uh, like I said, really, if you're going to use it, you're using it in place of having to erase outside the lines because erasing outside the lines can become tedious, especially if you're doing something that's fairly um, detailed. And so, you know, I would sit here on a regular drawing and I'd sit and I'd erase all of this because it would drive me crazy but now I can just clip it I don't need to erase it not necessary anymore all right that's going to be it for this week. I just wanted to share the clipping mask stuff since it did come in as a question. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, you can email me at terry.chikimiak at thedigitalpainter.com. Or you can leave a message on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, I check those uh, fairly regularly. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.